We are in the home stretch of completing the living room renovation at the cottage. This week I'm making a list of all the little things that need to be done and DIYing a frame for our TV so it looks like a beautiful piece of art instead of an empty black box. Welcome back to the living room. I cannot tell you how much the trim has changed the feeling and the look of this living room. You guys saw last week that I spent seven days straight putting up, cutting, staining, conditioning, all of the trim in the living room. I wanted it to match the original trim that really like I loved about touring this house originally and I think we got really 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 close to it So this week we are continuing to tackle things in the living room and I always work best with a list So I figured I would take you guys around with me and we are gonna do a list on everything That needs to be done in this living room to make it completely 100% 1000% finished <laughs> all of the trim is done here. I also patched all of the areas around the window. So there were like gaps in the sheetrock where I had to cut away, um, little things that I just need to fix and perfect. So I have put new drywall, I've sanded it all down, it's all perfect. I just need to put another coat, um, just paint it a little bit with the, the gray mist color that the wall color is. Another thing I really wanna do is put some center dividers in the glass here. These are the only three windows in the house that are only two panes. So one on top, one on bottom. The other ones have four. That's weird. We have to separate it. So number two is add center dividers. And then another big thing that's missing from this wall is window treatments. We have to pick them. Um, I actually ordered some swatches. These are swatch books that I ordered from Amazon. There was like a viral curtain company on Amazon um, that was pretty much a pretty good duplicate to like restoration hardware curtains. I ordered the Liz swatch book and the Isabella swatch book. They each have a bunch of colors to pick from. Isabella has more colors. Liz has more warm, deep neutrals. This whole time for, what, <laughs> two years, I have planned on having Roman shades that sit inside the windows, wouldn't cover any of the trim. And then in addition to the Roman shades, I wanted to do actual curtains that hung from floor to ceiling. So I'm thinking the Roman shades is a great place to start. Now, what color do we do? So I've been looking at all of these swatches. I don't want them to be super dark because then it's gonna block the sunlight and I don't want to do pure white because I don't like pure white anything everything has a little tone of warmth in our home that's usually what I gravitate towards so I immediately X'd out the the white and the kind of yellow undertone burlwood birch neutral it's light it's not white it's not super light but it has some warmth to it and I'm like okay does it go with the trim Totally love that. Does it go with the gray mist? 100%. The millstone gray? Yes. <laughs> Does it go with the lime wash? Yes. This is gray mist as well. So now that we've got the fabric picked, we need to know what size. We're gonna measure from inside the trim, because that's where it would be attached. And we've got 31 and a half by 76 and a half. Okay, continuing around, now we've got all of that planned. The bookshelves are done. They're great. I think I, I need to balance the decor because I've still got the more maximalist decor and more minimal over there. <laughs> One thing I do need to do is add all of our pretty uh, hardware. I found these at um, a local store. I've also found a lot more hardware recently that we can look at, but I thought that these would be would be nice. They have a little bit of detail, but they're not overpowering. So I've got, I got six of them for all of our cabinets, so we need to do that. Also, something that we did during construction and during building out the fireplace and things that I did not take into consideration was the placement of these plugs. Now, I don't know why they did them towards the front of the fireplace and installed them here, but I hate them. <laughs> I can't believe it. It's like right in front of where I want the bookshelves. So I need to re, that's another like bigger project. I need to reposition these plugs to the back. 
fireplace wall has come a long way. The mantle needs some work. I need to continue to age it. You can kind of tell the difference in kind of where I stopped. I was aging it to give it some depth and dimension. Um, and I stopped right about here where the mushrooms are and I didn't keep doing it because it was just really time consuming and I was working on other projects. So we need to finish the mantle just in general. I also need to come in here and finish out the inside. This is just going to be a like a fire, even though it, I really don't need fire resistant drywall because this is glass. Like the fire can't come out of our fireplace. Um, but basically just a piece of drywall that I can plaster, the texture that I have on the fireplace and paint black. I just want all of it black. I also built this brick hearth out of salvaged brick that was from the house. Um, and this is just how it was originally. It was this red brick, you know, really, really, really traditional. I need to fix a few things. I had my dad cut a piece of brick in half so that I could make the corner pieces. So I need to add those. And I also want to do something to it, but I'm a little bit nervous. I feel like the brick has a lot of pink undertones. And now that the trim, I wanted to wait until the trim was done. Now that the trim is done, it's really clashing. It's the trim is giving orange. This is giving pink. So we've got to do something. The idea I had from the beginning was to overgrout it with something more warm, you know, so we did that on the outside with the limestone. So we could come in on the, you know, the grouted edges and completely cover them and almost completely cover all of the brick color. We could do a lot to this. So we need to, I want to test it. I want to go and get some bricks that I have salvaged in the back and actually put and mix the overgrouted mortar with the sand to give me that warm color and test it first. But I need to patch the pieces and finish the hearth. We have a Samsung frame TV. You guys know I love them. I feel like you can't watch anyone online that does home decor that doesn't love them because you can turn them into art. This is one of my mom's paintings <laughs> that I can put on there and it just looks like art. But what I wanna do is I wanna further make it look like art. Frame it out. I wanna put a picture light above it. I wanna make it look like even when it's on the art mode, it actually looks like I hung a piece of art there instead of it actually being a TV. This door is close to being complete. There are some, a few things that I still need to do. I need to add in the trim around the glass. I need to stain the threshold to be the same color as the floor so it has a nice clean transition. I don't want to do it the dark wood color like the trim. And I need to put the hardware on. And I also want to add some center dividers to the transom window to make them look like the other two transoms in the room that are the original. This one is a new one that I built to match those. I just need to put some center dividers. And finally, in terms of furniture and decor, we've had our couch for a while since we were moving in. The coffee table, you guys saw two episodes where I found it at the flea market and we kind of did a little bit of adjustments to it to make it feel more like the cottage. These chairs are not meant to be in this room at all. These chairs I ordered actually for our bedroom when we do like a little seating area in there. I have two chairs back in the shed that I want to have recovered in a beautiful kind of brown green velvet. I need to find the fabric and I want to have it locally reupholstered by a woman that my mom has used before. And then we of course have decor that I want to put on the walls and then this room will be 100% finished. Okay, a storm is coming but I desperately want to get these chairs move to like the front of the shed so that I can, we, when we get to LA, we can find the fabric and send it to my mom so that she can take them. So I just want to make it really easy for her. I've got to do some, I want to see them too. I haven't seen them in like a year now, I think. I love them. They are definitely smaller than I remember, which is good. I was worried about them being too large. Oh yes. Look, the feet, Matt, that's why I love them. I got these for $5 at the thrift store. Five, $5 a piece, $10 total for two. <laughs> like that's, a, that's insane. They're just trying to get rid of them. Love, I'm gonna measure them too. Okay, so for the frame for a Samsung TV, I have no idea how big I wanna make it. I don't know if I wanna do it a three inch frame, a four inch frame. I am a very visual person. So I figured I would make a template. I got poster board from the dollar store for a dollar and I'm gonna cut it so that we can actually put it onto the TV, see what a four inch frame would look like, see what a three inch frame would look like, just to determine. I don't want it to be like too overpowering. I don't want it to be bigger than the mantle. There are some things to play. Okay, now we can 
tape it up and see. It actually goes the other way, obviously. That's three inches. And I think it's more than big enough because any bigger, it's gonna be the exact size of the mantle. Like, it, one inch is literally touching the end of the mantle. And I feel like that's too big. I'm so glad I did that because I tend to go bigger and I would have gone four inches and it would have been too big. Three inches is plenty. So essentially we're making one of the frames that I love to pick up at like estate sales and flea markets and stuff like an ornate frame but with our own materials. So I picked up some trim pieces from the hardware store that I liked. They had pretty details. They were on the more simple side, not super ornate. And then we can add some filigree to it as well. I have some pieces. How I'm designing this and how I'm structuring it in my head is that I wanna create a backing, like a template. So I was gonna use quarter inch plywood for this. Um, I didn't have any big enough pieces. I wanted them to be a continuous piece on the top and a continuous piece on the sides and the bottom. Uh, I didn't have any large sheets of plywood left, but I had some boards that I just like slim down. That's what I'm gonna use, but I was gonna use quarter inch plywood, which is much easier. Um, and I'm gonna cut these pieces to size, make the frame flat, just a flat piece of wood. You know what I mean? And then build on top of it. I feel like that's how best I can like figure out how to like put them together. You know what I mean? And, and the simplest, I feel like. So I've got my measurements here. I'm also gonna slim these boards down to three inches because that's all we, that's all we need. So they're three and a half right now because I, I had four inch boards. So the way the quarters are gonna be put together, they're gonna be mitered. So they're gonna be on a 45 degree angle so that they can meet together. Okay, so to put these pieces together, cool. I got these flat corner braces. You can get them from the hardware store, they're really inexpensive, and they basically just go like an L, and we can connect the two corners together into a perfect square. I'm just gonna make sure that it's really, really 90 degree, and it's really, really perfect before I screw them all in. So I just cut some half inch pieces of board out of scrap, but you can get these and buy these cut like this. They're in the dowel section. You know where it has all the round dowels? They have square ones too. So you don't, if you don't have the tools, you don't have to cut it yourself. But essentially what I wanna do is on the side, make it thicker. So it looks thicker on the edge, but it's actually not that thick here so that we can build on it. I don't want it to be super thick in front of the TV. Put a little bit of wood glue so it stays nice and strong. I'm worried about the corner here. I'm gonna reinforce it with some scrap material that we cut. So you, it, basically the quarter inch plywood and just make a stronger corner here. like a picture frame, that's exactly what I just did. I just reinforced the back so that it had lots of strength on the corners because it is gonna have to, you know, support itself up there and also hold, you know, a little bit of weight of the trim, not, not tons, but I just reinforced the corners. So that's what the back looks like. Here's the front. Now we got a flat surface <laughs> to work from. So if you wanted a really modern one, I mean, this would be a great, one now we're to the design part and it's like what do i want <laughs> what do i want it to look like not only do i have trim but i also have these other fun little things i've got some appliques that are wood we're gonna paint this all we're gonna spray paint it we're gonna create that gold look 
I don't necessarily need anything to match in terms of material. It doesn't need to be all wood or whatever. That's why I'm using MDF, wood, metal. I've got these little like appliques. And I also have this whole jar of little pretty little things. Look at how pretty those are. For like the corners, I felt like they were just ornate enough. Maybe they could go just in the corner. I, part of me wanted like a flat surface in between, like ornate and then flat and then a little bit of design. Is that too simple? I don't know, I kind of love that simple. Oh, uh, wait, I kind of love that. I think I'm gonna go for you guys. I think I really like the flat surface and the separation. I like it a lot. Okay, keep your fingers crossed. If not, we'll start over again, but like, I feel like it could look really cool. Okay, I'm gonna actually, now that I'm using more of the like flat surface, I'm going to fill these holes really quickly that I see the gaps and then sand this really quick. So much easier to sand when something's flat than adding all that trim and then trying to do it. It's just gonna be so much easier this way. So now I'm cutting all of these pieces with my miter saw, but you don't have to. Especially if they're small like this, they sell these guys. Brilliant invention. Uh, also helps when you're like trying to get little cuts that won't actually go in the miter saw. You could actually use this and not use a power tool like that to cut the trim. Um, MDF is actually pretty soft. Uh, so like if I wanted it on an angle, I just angle it up like that. See? And you don't need to use the power saw, power tools at all. Lost in the sight of you alone. Here I'll stay till dawn. I'm putting putty in all the seams to make sure that we're getting a really nice paint job when it's all done. Here I'll stay till I'm just gonna fill all the little tiny pinholes that I put the trim on with. Then we can spray paint it with the base layer and it can dry and then we can, you know, give it our touch. I'm really excited to add these little corners. I feel like they'll add a little bit of ornate detail without overdoing this. I just, I don't wanna overpower the mantle, you know? Okay, I actually do have a spray primer. It's just for metal. It's the red color. Just the same. I feel like I'm gonna use what I have. about an hour and a half so this is all dry so I'm gonna go in with at least the first if not one of two coats probably of the metallic champagne bronze good morning guys after two coats of this gold champagne bronze spray paint I let it dry overnight so it's looking pretty good like but what I want to do is talk about how it's going to be attached to the TV now I've seen people do it a couple of different ways I've even seen people just use like 3m and the stick sticky parts and then just like stick it to the frame of the TV 
which actually works. I mean, something like this isn't like extremely heavy. Um, I want to take it a step further because I actually saw a girl online and I cannot remember where I saw it or what her name was, but she asked, actually used these like wider, flat, elastic bands and attached them to the back so that the elastic bands kind of slid behind the TV. And I was like, that's actually really smart. I like that better than using the 3M. I don't know where she got something like that. And I didn't want to use fabric like that you use in like waistbands, like elastic like that, because I felt like it would give out over time. So I wanted to find something more industrial. They had these that have some stretch, but not a lot. I don't think that it will stretch out over time or sag over time. And they have these hooks on the end that you can actually take off. These are called rubber straps. So we're gonna attach these to the back. Okay, I've got a couple of things that we can use to give it that dimension. I played with a lot of the little details that I picked up. I was pretty limited in store and I just, I don't know, I kept coming back. I've, I've been wanting to use these little, this jar of little details for a while. So if we were just to do one, I mean, it could go in several places really. It could go right, this is kind of where I'm thinking it can go, right in the center. It could go up a little bit, you know, like that and kind of like case it. It could go on the corner. We could do more than one. <laughs> I was like, how could we play with them? Like, how could we make it look, you know, unique? When I did this, it had more of a Greek flair to me, like the layered leaves and stuff. So it's cool. I just don't know if I, I love that. I'm thinking maybe I like two of them. I feel like it kind of makes it a little more, just a little more, but I'm gonna start with one. Um, I'm gonna use E6000 glue to put it on. Uh, I usually use a, a dab of hot glue in addition to this, because the hot glue helps it to hold while it dries, because um, E6000 takes a little bit of time to dry. Um, but I think once, if I get them on here now, uh, while we're like doing little detail work, they'll dry. Let's do some depth and contrast the dark first. I've got this gel stain in dark walnut. And you definitely want the dark in the creases, in the, the depths of the piece. <laughs> so I wanna get like in there. Mm. This isn't gonna fit in there. Maybe this dry brush will. So we can kind of put it on a little thick, but we're gonna wipe it. lows darker now we need to make our highs brighter more highlighted um, so this we're done with okay we're gonna use the rub and buff in, in antique gold it gives it more of a reflective quality I'm even gonna brush the tops of these kind of to bring the same tone so that it all really goes really well together Wow. 
Moment of truth, right? Should we put her up? Okay, let's do it. Also, you know how it has a sensor? I'm pretty sure there's a sensor on the TV that's right about there. Maybe I should go ahead and drill a hole so that it can read the remote. Obviously, we want this to be functional. Okay, anywhere right there, I feel like will work. Oh, the rubber just like really grabs onto the TV material. So I was like pushing and <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys. Wait, that looks so good. We made a frame. Yes! Let's see if my hole was big enough for the um, for the remote. Oh, that is marvelous. We want the TV to look like art. We don't want it to look like a TV. That's the whole point of having one of these TVs. How do we make it look more even more like art? We add a picture light. I found this one on Amazon, super inexpensive. I love the shape here the how it kind of hooks down I felt like it gave it more height than just being like straight out of the wall now i do not have the connection the hard wire up there because i have no intention on ever lighting this i don't want light reflecting off of the tv now i could if one day down the road i have a plug that's behind the tv that's not being used i could transform that into a switch nice. run the hard wire to this and it actually work and you know, be able to turn on and off. But for now, I'm just gonna put this up there because I don't wanna turn it on right now. Amazing. that I want for this area. I want to recover them. I have a friend that has a fabric store in California. We're going to stop by and see her and see what she's got and if she has something in the right color. Okay, we've made it to F&S Fabrics here in California. I pulled up the picture again to remind myself, okay, this is what we're looking for so I can show Jamie uh, what we're kind of going for hopefully she has one that's brown with a little bit of like green undertones on a complete side note look how beautiful this vintage linen is <gasps> i want to make some cafe curtains look how stunning this is you guys <gasps> oh. I absolutely love this fabric that we found. What I was looking for was chocolate, like my inspiration picture, but with a green undertone. Sometimes they can go more purple, but I just wanted to be careful not to make it green because we have the millstone gray in there. And although I like to bring in different hues of the same color, uh, I was a little bit nervous about that. So I'm glad we found something that was more chocolate based. She's gonna check on inventory, check on the price for me. I looked at every velvet card color card that they had ranging in price from like $25 a yard to $259 a yard I was like oh no 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 it was beautiful velvet like everything about it felt so luxurious but we're not looking for $259 a yard when I needed for these two chairs we estimated that I was going to need between 10 and 12 yards to do both of them so five to six yards to do one chair so since we have to wait for this fabric to come in then for the chairs to actually be completed and I'm also ordering all of the window treatments for the living room that's going to take some time so we are back in California for the summer I'm really 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 excited to do projects here at the house and finally paint these white walls something. I am i can't deal with the white walls anymore. So get ready for some really fun DIY projects here and makeovers here at the house in California and see more Kinsley, obviously. Are you excited? She's excited to run around her pool and not fall in. She, she does well. She learned her lesson the first time, didn't you? Oh, <laughs> bye guys. <laughs>